This one is called the real reason why everybody is quitting the anime industry. Let's see what the anime man has to say. The anime industry. It is dark, it is damp, it is deep. A massive industry that is long standing okay. and is run by a lot of old heads who still think that Japan is in its economic bubble. And maybe it's. And these goddamn boomers keep striking channels that are doing free advertisement that could only make them profit even more. What's wrong with Japanese companies, bro? It's because of that that we see constantly so many stories of people who are working in this industry come out of the other end feeling exhausted like they just got out of a goddamn war. Yeah, so like MAPPA, for example. So what was before MAPPA? You remember Jujutsu Kaisen when it was airing recently? Season, uh, the Shibuya incident? Remember all the drama of like MAPPA workers are like quitting, everybody just leaving, there's like, it's like a skeleton crew. Well, MAPPA is the byproduct of a bunch of people that left another company, right? It was Studio Madhouse. So it's just like, once a studio has matured and sold out, all the top heads, all the people are like, fuck this, let's start our own company. And then MAPPA became a thing. And then they were good until they got big. And then the same shit happens over and over again, right? It's almost like this inevitable cycle. Or, and we're going to be talking about one of these instances today with an animator who used to be a pretty prominent and well-known animator over at MAPPA. For those of you who don't know, there, MAPPA there has is. made a massive name for itself, creating... Maybe they'll give us some insider information on what's going on with Jujutsu Kaisen and shit like that. Some of the biggest shows and most talked about shows, including Jujutsu Kaisen, Chainsaw yeah. Man, and a slew of other ones that I'm sure you've heard of before. But it seems like he is done. He, he no longer wants to work for MAPPA anymore. And there is an article over here by CBR that expresses exactly why that is the case and why it is a really telling story. Just one of many telling stories of why the anime industry may not be as sustainable as the anime industry might think. Sustainable, huh? I don't know if it's always felt like a lot of like, there's a lot of offshoring work too. I mean, not even in just the anime industry, but like all industries right now, a lot of white collar office jobs are getting like there's hiring freezes, mass layoffs, companies over hiring and realizing that with the recent development of AI and also people that's willing to work for a lower wage in different places, they can just simply lay off the forces and offshore a lot of work. And I think a lot of anime also does that shit too. When the core studio doesn't have enough resources or budget, or timing to do it, don't they start outsourcing all their work offshore? And then you can tell the quality difference of the anime episodes when that happens. Popular One Piece and Jujutsu Kaisen animator Chansard Vincent, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that name, has shared why he'll never work for MAPPA again via a Twitch livestream. Obviously, this right. livestream is no longer available for whatever reason, but we do have some translations uh, because I believe Chansard is a French animator. Uh, says here, Chansard and fellow animator Dorian Coulon, again, sorry for the mispronunciation, took part in Konoha TV's Twitch stream where they discussed their anime careers and inspirations. Uh, Twitter user Crocodile OPC translated some of the quotes as the live stream took place, revealing Chansard's reason for why he refused to work with MAPPA ever again. Let's hear he it. says, he, quote, I don't want to support a company that ideologically doesn't care about working conditions. Hakuyu Gore, who is uh, one of the directors uh, over at uh, MAPPA, or was one of the directors over at MAPPA, had asked me to help out, and I like working with him. He also doesn't want to work for anymore for MAPPA. So even like a head guy at MAPPA doesn't want to work for MAPPA anymore. I think that makes a lot of sense though, because like once you become at the top of the food chain, or at least I don't know what the corporate structure is like, these are definitely not, you know, bottom of the barrel foot soldiers, right? Those foot soldiers, I think there's so many of them and that's why people are willing to give them such shitty working conditions. And as soon as someone quits, there's like 10,000 other people out the door that just want to sign up because this is an industry that's exploited by the flames of passion. In video gaming industry as well, did you know that software engineers that if they work for any other sector other than video games, they make a lot more money. There's a funny saying in, in comp sci actually, or in the programming industry where it's like, if you wanna get paid half as much, but work twice as hard, you become a game developer. With this example though, I feel like a lot of people, once they get to the top, they're gonna obviously value work-life balance more. And that's why these execs are like, yeah, I don't wanna work about, you know, work for a company that doesn't care about working conditions, but like, the pro e even if this happens, like, isn't MAPPA again a product 
of people leaving Madhouse because of those working conditions and forming this new one. But it's happened again. So it's going to just keep on happening. The cycle will never end until what happens. What even happened? They just became too big. They sold out. In fact, there's a studio called Dogakobo, I think, which made Oshinoko and is making so many other crazy enemies too. And a lot of people don't like Karakawa. And Karakawa, I think, now took on Dogakobo as a subsidiary. I wonder if that has anything to do with how a company, a studio, starts small as a passion project, makes amazing work, then eventually, as they sell out, then that's where everything becomes more fucked up in terms of work-life balance and people don't want to, you know... They don't, they don't get any work-life balance. Everybody just is forced to work overtime, unpaid probably, gets paid nothing, and as soon as you say you don't want to work, there's like, again, 10,000 bodies outside lined up ready to go in. Thank you for the gift to Sub Emilio. Which is really scary, if you ask me. I mean, it is no surprise when we say that, you know, animators in the Japanese anime industry, their work conditions and work environments are no longer a secret. It has been documented hundreds of times of how they are underpaid. I love this ad right over here. Funny. Wonder what that gacha game is anyways. How they are understaffed, so they have to be overworked. And that the crunch times and the working conditions are absolutely abysmal. It, it, it's literally like a sweatshop yep. right in Japan. It says here, Chance is one of the industry's most popular animators. Despite his young age, he made a name for himself with his work in Boruto as an animator and animation director before Ooh. his frequent appearances in One Piece introduced him to a larger audience. He was also notoriously responsible for sneaking the Among Us reference into the One Piece anime, which if you guys have never seen that before, there was? it's fucking hilarious. I mean, look at this shit. It's literally in an Among Us. <laughs> Just, okay. You see this right over here? I guess this is some kind of aura. I don't know. You, you get to see Amogus right over there. Hit it in plain sight. Never got caught for it until he went out of his way to actually show it. And I think that is an absolute giga chat move. Chance has latest comments expand on ones from November 2023, where he first said that he would never work with Mappa again, citing then that it was only Go who made him consider it at the time. Mappa stands to possibly lose two talented animators, with Go purportedly likewise not wanting to work there anymore. Go garnered praise for his work on the widely praised animation in Fate Apocrypha and on the All Might vs. High End fight in My Hero Act. Academia, which okay. are, you know, some of the most amazingly animated scenes that we've seen in recent anime. I mean, it. I, I think it definitely goes to show that, you know, MAPPA, for the longest time, are just continuously upping their animation game. Like, you only have to look at, like, a couple of scenes in Jujutsu Kaisen or a couple of scenes in Chainsaw Man to see that some of these animation qualities are fucking insane. This is the- Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you've seen those animes, you can definitely tell the quality of it is crazy. And there's a lot of talent at MAPPA, but what happens when they all start leaving? And like these top execs, I guess, are leaving, but I guess MAPPA isn't scared. Are they, do they think that they're too big to fail? Somehow they have, they always get all the good animes. And if there's always this rumors and like, um, even people just leaving and making articles like this, aren't they going to become a black company? And at that point, if the talent all leaves, I guess I already said that like, there's going to be more lined out the window, but I doubt every one of them is going to be talented. I guess they're just banking on the fact that not everyone is going to be ballsy enough to leave. No one's going to take that risk. Some people may leave, but as long as we have this pipeline of, you know, these animation slaves that's willing to work for a penny because for the passion of anime, everything is going to be sustainable is what MAPPA is probably presuming. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Does anyone know what happened to Studio Madhouse? Did end Because like once... The people from Madhouse left to go to MAPPA. Did Madhouse then fall off? I've never actually kept up with stuff like that. The type of quality that we would have seen only in like high budget anime films, maybe about five, 10 years ago. Now we are seeing them in just weekly seasonal anime like Jujutsu Kaisen and Chainsaw Man. And just to think how much manpower would have had to gone into all of that to achieve on a weekly basis is freaking insane. A little do we know though that it's not actually as a result of a ton of really talented animators that are all working on it together. No, it is usually a couple of animators working on it together over absurd okay. time schedules and crunch times. And are they getting praises for it? Are they getting nope. paid extra for it? Are they getting nope. compensated for their time? Are they getting celebrated nope. for the work that they put in? Unfortunately not. Says here, MAPPA has become infamous for its- And the fucked up thing, I remember during when Shibuya incident was airing, 
people were making farming the uh, the controversy at Mappa, saying, "Oh my God, Mappa! You know, they're pretty much like a sweatshop. It's like Amazon. The workers don't get anything." And the more I thought about it, the more fucked up it was because once people um, started to question, like, "What if the workers just went on strike?" Let's say they just you know banded together and said, "Fuck you!" In the middle of Jujutsu Kaisen and Shiba incident, we're gonna just stop. And we're going to demand for better um, pay and working conditions. But if that happens, what do you think the public will side with? Right? And this is the fucked up part. Do you think that the masses, the normies, the people that just watched this anime episode without having any understanding of how, this, how the industry works behind the scenes, do you think that they're going to get mad at the execs of MAPPA? Or do you think that they're going to get mad at the animators who are, you know pressed for so much work so they decided they're, they're going to strike or they're going to you know, put down a, their foot and try to make a point. Anytime shit like this happens, the corporations are never blamed because the monkeys are too stupid to understand what's going on. So in fact, the animators will get shit on. So now you're fucked if you do, fucked if you don't. Meaning if you deliver the product, you, you know, and Jujutsu Kaisen did get delivered, the animators aren't really going to get praised. The consumers just want the end product at the end of the day. They're just like, we just want the fucking episode. I don't really care how much, you know, you have to work. I don't really care that you guys are working unpaid overtime with all these shitty circumstances. No one gives a fuck. They just want the end product. And that's why I feel like a lot of corporations can get away with it. It's always, it's, it's like meat shield that's just placed there. So, I don't know. What are you going to do about it? I guess the only way you can, you can really change these things is, I don't know. I don't think anything can be like fixed permanently. It's just a cycle of corporation. The studio starts off new, passion project does well, sells out, turns bad, people leave, make a new studio. It's just, that's the meta. Poor working conditions with Jujutsu Kaisen Season 1 director Sung Hoo Park and Chainsaw Man Season 1 director Ryu Nakayama both alluding to harassment from within the company as reasons for moving on. Chainsaw's work can be seen in Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. Uh, a sequel anime was recently announced with the first trailer for the upcoming Culling Game arc. So it's really unfortunate that talented people like this are going through these horrible working conditions. And, you know, this is, again, not new stuff that we're seeing and th this is this is kind of a reoccurring thing i mean there are entire shit like this has been happening in the anime industry for a long time right entire organizations out there like say the animated dormitory project that are constantly trying to cover the asses of these anime studios because of the terrible working conditions that these animators are subject to i mean we ourselves over on trash taste actually did a full episode with a seasonal animator ken nice arto plug. who done stuff on like my hero academia as well as dragon ball who expressed the exact same points that i'm making right now this is not new stuff but it is getting to the point now where the conditions are becoming so egregious are becoming so unfair that these animators just can't hold it in anymore they're just like done with it they 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 but i feel like nothing will change and there's something about the japanese work culture the whole collective mindset the whole attitude of stay in your own lane put your head down and don't complain and don't make problem for others that makes it hard for workers in Japan to really unionize and have a strong labor movement. In North America, there's a lot of free will and individualism, which results into people being able to be more selfish and think for better things for themselves. And I think the working conditions in the labor unions, while it may not be perfect or ideal, right, you still have a lot of exploitations. You see Starbucks, and anytime like a union opens up, they close that branch, right? You've seen shit like that happen. But at least it's happening, like at least the unions are forming. I feel like in Japan, that'll just like never happen because people just like fundamentally at their core, the culture, something with it. I'm not sure. It's just having a strong working union is just so against the Japanese working culture. And until that gets fixed, which I doubt it will, nothing will change one out and what happens then when these talented animators opt out because of the terrible working conditions well current animators who are maybe not as talented maybe not as high up in the ranks for instance are going to look at that and go well shit if this guy the star animator in our studio isn't getting treated properly th then, then what's going to happen to us i don't know bro you might get a promotion a new slot opened up, you know, director of animation for Jujutsu Kaisen season two. It's, it's your chance. Nah, I don't know. But and, and people are too scared to leave, too. It's just a fucked up situation overall. And with the rise of like AI and different technologies, I feel like you've even seen AI animes, right? I think there was like a rock, paper, scissors short 
like this uh the YouTube channel. Like, there's a YouTube video on like this like quote unquote anime. It's like English stuff. It's like rock paper scissors. It's it's pretty decent, but there's a lot of hate for it because obviously it's looking like it's technology is going to take over jobs. And as that also grows, I feel like the industry will suffer even more as people realize that, you know, instead of having a team of like five get something half-assed out there, you can have like two people with the help of AI doing the same work, you know? Or rather, what is currently happening to us? Maybe they're so oblivious to the fact that they're getting treated poorly until they see someone of a higher position getting treated just as badly. Mm. That's If you're in a company like that, that doesn't make you want to stay in that company. If you look at your boss getting treated like absolute shit and going, wow, well, I guess that promotion didn't really help with anything, huh? It's like the, the working conditions haven't really changed. Team morale just dies. Once you see that shit happening in the workplace, it's just, you just start thinking to yourself, like, why would I even try, right? It, it is such a killer of team morale. But the thing is, even if team morale is down, even if people, like, there, there's the opportunity for people to leave, I think the, I think most people are scared because they have livelihoods, they have, like, a mortgage to pay, they got bills to pay, they got kids to feed, all these different things you know, prevent someone from leaving a job even though the working conditions are so bad. And I think, I feel like employers kind of are aware, especially in this like economy in the job market where it's so hard to get a job that they can get away with pushing the envelope that much and then even more then there's no real point in trying to work hard to get promoted. And even if you don't want to get promoted, even if you want to stay as like a, a, an in-between animator for the rest of your life, just you have to th weigh the options here. Sure, you know, for a lot of these animators, they're probably doing it out of the passion for the love of animation for the... And that is exactly what is being exploited by the industry, right? For the passion, for the love, to the point where people will fucking work for free. And that creates so much power dynamic for the employers and the employees love of anime i totally get that but sometimes you have to step the foot down for the greater good of the industry sometimes you have to step your foot down and go listen man passion isn't going to pay the bills and yeah. it's very obvious that a lot of the money that is coming out of the success of series like Jujutsu Kaisen, like one piece are not going towards the people who are actually making the of shows course it's not. not going to the animators it's not going to the producers it's not going to the director i hear a lot of the money goes to I hear even mangaka as well get fucked out of this, right? The whole, the whole setup of animation is like, I think the mangakas get robbed a lot. And, I, and even in like the, among the voice actors too, like um, there's like a chart. So I, I saw like a graph or like the, the breakdown of how much voice actors get paid. And like, it is crazy the difference between like A-list voice actors and like B-list voice actors. The gap between number one and number two, it's like everyone gets like paid like this. And then as soon as like a high list, like someone that you know, like for example, Dio's voice actor, anyone, you know, it's just like shoots through the roof. Everything is so, so disproportionately placed. It's going to the heads of the IPs, the heads of the industry. Usually, again, as I said at the beginning of the video, spearheaded by old heads who still think that they're in the 80s economic bubble. And I've been saying this for years now, and, and people have been saying this for years, that this system that the anime industry has set themselves in is absolutely unsustainable it is and maybe that's for the good because like change won't happen until you know people hit rock bottom nothing will change because like this structure that we have is going to continue the shitty working condition is going to continue until it hits a breaking point and maybe that is where we get the tipping point of the unsustainability and then what maybe things are going to get better or maybe just anime dies i doubt that's going to happen not going to last because the only reason why animation quality in these big studios has increased is because the demand for such high quality animation has also increased mm -hmm. with anime just becoming so much more popular and so much more mainstream compared to 5 10 15 years ago it's just created a bigger demand for more shows of better quality at a faster rate but if you don't answer that demand with the appropriate supply then it's just going to start crumbling at the seams which is i think what is actually happening with the anime industry right now and, and to me you know as someone who has you know looked at the anime industry and been part of the anime industry for quite a while now it's crazy to see that it hasn't reached that point yet because trust me if it was any other country if this system was set up in like america for instance it would be gone before you know it people yeah 
because again, fundamentally, the core root cause of the problem is the culture. The culture that creates this working environment that people are afraid to speak up and band together. Something about Asian culture being told to put your head down and don't make trouble for others is fucking us in the long run compared to the American yeehaw culture where it's just like, you know, I'm going to speak my own individual freedom thinking. Will understand the inequalities of what's happening to them as opposed to the big businessmen up at the top and see the pay gap, see the relationship gap and stuff like that, see the hard work not getting paid off at the bottom. And there's just going to be like a, a massive strike. There's going to be a massive coup d'etat happening within the anime Great. industry. The only reason why the Japanese people. Great. Fucking let it happen. Revolt. But is that going to happen? No, because I think. The people that are stuck in those, you know, the situation are too cucked right now. Well, don't do it is because they're too scared to a lot exactly. of the time. Exactly. And that is a fact. And, you know, like, look at how just Japanese society operates with that kind of stuff. They're very just complacent and content with where they are because they don't want to overstep their boundaries exactly. as a result of the collective societal norm that Japan has created itself around. But that gritting of the teeth by the animators... I don't think is going to last for very long. And I think within the next like three, four, five years, mm. we are going to see that massive strike. If we. Mm, three, four, five years. People really need to hit rock bottom for that to happen. Until everyone is like starving and just at the brink of just poverty, I don't think this will ever happen. Even in North America, right? Whenever strikes happen, there's things called like. Picket crossers or line crosses where, you know, people still have to pay the bills. And when you're on strike, you're not getting paid. And the corporations can hold out and it takes a long time for an agreement to happen. And some people are willing to cross the line and start working because they got bills to pay, right? It's easy for me to say, just go on strike. Come on, put your balls down. You know, do something about it, right? Change won't happen until you fucking show them with action that you're not going to take this. But... The livelihood, the healthcare, the food, the everything about it. Like, who's going to pay for that? That's why until, like, society, like, collapses like that, I don't think this is actually going to happen in three, four, five years. If it did, then we'll revisit this video. If we don't see that massive strike, then we are definitely going to see animators just quietly leaving through the exit, not wanting to interact with the anime industry ever again. And what's going to happen as a result of that is we're going to get less shows, of worse equality at a slower rate. And that's not going to please the big businessmen at the top because they see that this influx of money is starting to come in as a result of anime becoming more mainstream. So they're going to want more. They're going to want more animators. They're going to want more better quality. They're going to want yeah. more shows just supply in general demand. to satiate that need and satiate that demand with as much supply as possible. But if your supply is unsustainable, then no one wins. I don't want to put the blame entirely on like the big businessmen as well. I think some of the blame also has to be pointed towards like people who watch anime, us, anime fans. Hmm. I think we've become How? so complacent with like this higher quality more frequently that it's sending a weird message towards people in the industry that we want more, 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 more. Keep giving us more of better quality and just keep upping it over and over and over. As a person that has been covering anime for about three years, watching up to 20 separate series of seasonal animes every other season, has the quality been that fucking good? I feel like it's just been an influx of just garbage shit with the diamond in the rough here and there. Like, for example, like, there, there, there is so, there's unlimited amount of shitty isekais that comes out, right? Are, are, are we actually getting good animes? Sometimes there's really good ones, right? Sometimes there's really amazing ones. Right now, this season, I'd say like Wistoria is there. Oshinoko Roshidere. Elusive Samurai. But then there's like 20 plus other ones, which is just complete garbage doo-doo over again and one thing that is certainly not helping is all those fucking twitter accounts that do like a yeah so i compared uh this particular anime scene with the manga panel and i can't believe how much they fucking ruined my favorite scene in the anime because they <laughs> moved this one pixel too far to the fucking right every time i see people like that i just think you 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 just don't deserve anime straight up you just don't deserve it because you don't understand. I'm slowly starting to realize why uh, the anime man apparently got canceled by some different anime fandoms. These guys are getting some spicy takes right now. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Understand how much hard work and effort is being put into creating these shows that you then openly criticize 
on your Twitter for likes and interactions. And look, that's not me saying that anime is like void of any kind of criticism. Like, of course, it's allowed to be criticized. It's it's a public work that is sent out there to the public. But I think getting like nitpicky with stuff like that, that really at the end of the day does not change whether the enjoyment factor of a show increases or decreases in any amount of ways, I think just sends like a weird I don't know, I feel like this is such a specific example. I feel like there are times when an anime does butcher an iconic scene from the manga, right? I, I can't give a recent example. I think last time I saw some shit on Twitter like that was like My Hero Academia. I think there was like a panel of this evil guy in the background shading compared to what was going on in the anime, made the whole scene ruined or something. And for that, I would totally understand how people felt like this is not the experience I was looking for and this, this doesn't feel right. I don't know. Weird message to the anime industry of like, oh, okay, uh, we're very sorry that we fucked up your favorite manga panel. Uh, yeah. Please let us change that by giving you the most godly animation on a weekly basis. Oh, by the way, uh, we're not going to change the pay of our animators though. Of course um, not. So, yeah, if, if the animator doesn't sleep for three days, it's, it's kind of on you as well. If you ask me, Really unfair, right? Does that actually happen? Hold up. The example right now is that people were complaining about a specific animation being not as um, loyal to the manga source material. And then the studio then said, oh, we're sorry. We're going to now up the expectations and make the animators work even harder. Is, has examples of that ever actually happened? I didn't realize that things like that actually happened. I didn't realize that Japanese corporations even listen to public outcry and say, oh, shit. All right. Well, fucking up the animation. Enjoy the next couple episodes of Crack Sakuga then. That actually does happen? I never knew. Right, obviously, like, the common enemy should be, like, the big businessmen at the top uh, who own these anime industries, who are reaping in all the money that the anime makes, and are just, like, money-hungry and power-hungry to just keep making more and milking out this animation medium. But I think, as anime fans, we also need to be respectful of these animators who are putting in the time, putting in the passion, putting in the effort to giving us some of the most memorable television that we've ever seen at such sure. a low cost and a poor standard of living. So I think the one thing we can do as anime fans is to just like be patient. If a new season is going to come out in like the next like four or five years, let the animators cook. Don't rush them. Just let them do their thing. And if it ends up being great, then hey, I guess the wait was worth it. And if I had- Yeah, that's why I've like- I'm always down for animes to take their time, right? I don't want to rush product. If you need an extra season, if you need two seasons to work on it, fucking go for it. And like regarding the constructive criticism or like complaining about, you know, the animation quality on social media and then having the big, big wigs, the big bosses come in and make the animators work even harder because of those complaints. Rather than approaching it in a way where you're shitting on the animation, like the anime panels, like maybe you should approach it and by shitting on the big heads instead, right? You shit on the corp who's saying, I can't believe, you know, MAPPA gave such a shitty working schedule to the animators so that the product became this way. So that it sends a message of, you know, don't fucking make the, the animators work even harder for, you know, the same pay just to up the animation quality, but like change the whole structure. But like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, again, the common consumer just has no empathy or understanding of how this shit even works and will always shit on the animators without understanding what they've even been given to work with and how they're just set up to fail. I had to say anything uh, to the actual like people in the anime industry. First off, let's start off with like the top business people. What the fuck are you doing? Hey, your goddamn animators. They are what the fuck are they doing? They're making a shitload of money and I doubt things are going to change until something starts hurting in their wallets. Like, they have no empathy. They don't give a fuck. They're here to make a dollar, right? They're here to get their bag. And the system is working perfectly for them. And while this may be unsustainable, they might be in here for the quick, you know, get rich scheme and get the fuck out when everything collapses. So just tell them, telling them, just pay them better. It's never going to happen. Are carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders like fucking Atlas so that you can sit up in your high chair and smoke that cigar like the anime villain that you are. Don't rush out shit. Stop making all of these fucking, like, niche shows that three people are going to watch because no one cares. Can we just take it back to the- <laughs> Sounds like a lot of weeklies that we check out. Early 2000s, where there was maybe, like, 10 shows a season that were all pretty decent, or at least good. What happened to quality over quantity? Because- 
I think that it's just capitalism at the end of the day, right? Quality over quantity? No, it's all about quantity. It's not about, you know, how how many good enemies we can pump out. It's all about how many enemies can we possibly pump out meeting bare minimum expectations and profit and get away with it. Because at the end of the day, all they're trying to do is make as much money as possible. And the current system, it works for them. And until their wallets start hurting, just like how Crunchyroll debacle of the getting rid of features and comments and stuff like that, right? Until their wallets start hurting, nothing will change. Because right now you have quality and quantity, which everybody knows does not work together. You have to sacrifice one or the other. You can't. No, the only thing being sacrificed is the employees. Don't just keep pushing one and hoping that the other one is going to follow without following that up with more people at hand or better pay or more, I guess, encouragement to give to the animators to be like, hey, you know, you have to animate like uh, seven scenes in the next like four minutes, uh, but <laughs> at least at least the pay is good. At least you're getting paid for is your it? efforts. There's a lot that can be changed here. And if the current trajectory of how the anime industry operates continues to go the way that it does i am very afraid that we're going to get to the point where there will just be no anime at all or we just will that ever happen no anime at all something's gotta give right people are getting more pressured people are getting more tired of this work and let's see the talent leaves and the supply leaves but the demand for anime keeps growing i just feel like with the rise of ai they're gonna figure out more ways of efficiently making shitty animes with the least amount of people. I don't know. I just have a bad feeling. Just going to get to the point with what Western cartoons became, where it's just all 3D with 3D models, which, Jesus. you know, in a lot of Is ways, isn't the worst thing in the world. But I think the one thing that makes anime still so unique in the year of 2024 is that a lot of it is still 2D. A lot of it is still hand-drawn. That's a yeah, a lot of it is, with a lot of shitty CGI too that gives you whiplash as soon as you change scenes. Cough, cough, failure frame. Magic that we don't want to lose in our Japanese cartoons because that's what makes it so much more unique and enthralling and fun to watch and experience. Like, look what happened when Ghibli finally decided to buckle their knees to the 3D overlord and create that really shit 3D anime film. No one gave a shit about it. It looked like crap. And Ghibli backed out on their words by creating Boy and the Heron and went back to their old methods and won a fucking Golden Globe for it. So obviously there is a massive demand to the type of stuff that you are doing, but you have to fix it from the inside. You have to completely restructure the model of how this industry operates. Otherwise, it is going to die. And if I may be so bold to say, if it results in animators struggling, you know, losing sleep, losing their lives, really, and stepping away from it all because the work conditions are so shit and they're not getting paid enough, Maybe anime deserves to die. That's my thoughts and opinions on- Maybe anime deserves to die. You know who deserves to die? The shitty fucking business decision makers at the top that's, you know, making all this shit unsustainable. In a video game, of course. I don't know. I just- I have a very doomer approach to this because I'm a, I have a very black-pilled- just like a perspective on the world, just knowing the shitty qualities of human, you know, humans at, at, at the core of them. I never like to think, I never want to give people the benefit of that. I just assume the absolute worst because it just kind of protects me from that. And the absolute worst qualities of a human is, is just greed. You see all of this happening. Do you think that the anime execs are going to change? No, nah. I think that nothing will change until there is something that actually gives up. And then, do you think that, like, talent leaving is going to be the reason why anime studios change? I think that there's still going to be an infinite supply of people that's going to keep wanting to work for without pay because of passion. And that pipeline is probably always going to exist there until something fundamentally changes. And because of the core culture of Japan, that just can't happen until, like, like I don't know. It's just, I just feel very hopeless about the situation overall, especially with the advent of AI coming in. On a, let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. I'd love to know what you think. And uh, hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smack my... I know this one is a little bit of a, of a, a, a doomer video, right? It's, it's kind of sad. But like, all we can really do, and go give him a like on the video if you liked it. I don't know. 
again, it says at the end of the day, just corporate greed. The root cause of this is the Japanese culture of not wanting to stick out and always putting your head down and just grinding. Don't make problem for others. And it does suck. And if one day things, you know, happen such that anime dies instead for the sake of animators, then it is what it is. And we move on to Western cartoon reactions, baby.